Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummings and welcome to this video. I'm a historical researcher and author and many years ago I asked myself the question, what do the samurai ninja actually do? And I went on a crusade to find them. And I came across a school called Natori Ryu, which held one of the most famous curriculums, one of three, and pretty much one of the best ninja manuals there was. And up until that point, everybody thought that's that's it, that's, that's the, all of the school. And I went on a much deeper search and I found pretty much all of their documents. We are missing a couple, but I found out of them probably about um, 20 full manuals. It depends how you divide them is how you count that number. Um, and what I'm going to do today is take you through the basics of understanding where Natori Ryu Ninjutsu comes from, or Shinobi no Jutsu as it is known. But before we go any further, I just want to say this is the Book of Samurai series, Samurai Arms, Armour and the Tactics of Warfare. It all starts here. This is actually book number two. Book number one is there, but I'll explain why, you, you, you know, for Ninjutsu, you start here. So, okay, let's go back. What is Natoriu? So when the Takeda clan were were on the you know on the go, they had a retainer called Natori Masatoshi. Now Natori Masatoshi, Natori Masatoshi uh, ended up going over to the Tokugawa side. So basically, he went over to the Tokugawa side when the uh, Takeda were defeated, as did most of the remaining uh, Takeda retainers. Uh, they they weren't disloyal. They literally there was no Takeda left. He'd been killed, and uh, the last proper Takeda leader been executed so they just went over to the Tokugawa side. Now a few years later there was a man born called uh, Natori Sanjoro Masazumi and he uh, became a close retainer to the Lord of Kishu and Natori Sanjoro Masazumi is known as Isui Sensei. Um, now he was wandering around Wakayama Castle and everything and he wrote a very famous document called the Shoninki which is the true path of the ninja. And this has become famous throughout the, the ninja world as like this, the center of sort of like that ninjutsu tradition. However, actually it's the last thing he ever wrote. This is the last thing Isui Sensei wrote. He wrote volumes before that, volumes. And he wrote it on a subject called Gunpo. So the ways of the military but also known as gungaku which is the study of the ways of the military so at the highest heights of natoriu you are gumposha a person who can understand all of military ways so let's go back to the base student so here in wakayama you've got a real samurai he's a war master he's serving one of the most important families in all of japan at the time um, in fact, they become the shoguns, that family are that important that they become the shoguns. And he's one of their war masters, basically. Now, to start with, you get the first scroll, which is called Heika Jordan. Now, in this, as I said to explain, we had to cut the scroll, not cut them up. We didn't divide them, but we put them out of order just because of publishing the ways word counts work and the way that we found the book would be more interesting. So... You get this book first, is Heika Jodan. Now, there's not much on ninjutsu in there, but it's, it builds a solid idea of what you should be as a samurai. And how, and for example, how to move at night, how to move in the dark, how to count enemies, things like that. There's lots of that sort of stuff. But the actual beginning would be in this book, in a scroll called Heigu Yoho, which means military ways of, um, sorry, ways on military gears. Uh, for like equipment, armor, arms, this sort of stuff, and you start to get the shinobi popping up. For example, it starts teaching you how to count mats in a battle camp to find out if you're in there infiltrating. It also talks about silent sandals. Not many people actually remark on this, but Natoriu has silent sandals made of human hair. So female, these probably get female human hair. In fact, it was female. And they make sandals out of it. And that's their creeping in style. So you can see ninjutsu starts to appear in there. Then you start to go, we go back to the first book and you're on Ipe Yoko. That starts talking about achievements and understanding where shinobi fit into it and, and how they work. So once you've learned that, the next step is to go to Heiki Yoho. And Heiki Yoho here, in, if you go to book two and you open up page 211, it starts talking about spies, kanja, which are associated with ninja and it's the five types of spy. So here a Natori student gets his basic understanding of the types of spy. But exactly after that, right after that, is shinobi no mono infiltrators and it's got the very first scroll if you like list of 
ninjutsu under Natoryu. It doesn't explain a lot, but it's the first time that a Natoryu samurai student would be like, okay, I'm starting to understand this. And they would start to be taught the fundamentals of ninjutsu. So let me just wrap that into a, a nice ball for you. The student starts, they, they, they sign their promise over to the school. They go through basic training. They go through their basic idea. They get an understanding of basic equipment and how shinobi, how to defend against shinobi. So, for example, the spear. There's a ring on the spear, and that's for identifying marks. But actually, you can tie torches to it and search for ninja. So we know that ninja were in the trees, in the bushes, and that they were being searched for by these torches. Also talks about the sandals that you should wear, and even how to count mats, like we said. But also the types of baskets that you would hide in when you infiltrated an army. So you'd empty some samurai's gear, get in the basket and let the, the donkey or mule take or horse take you through. And that was one of the, that's one of the, the Natori ninjutsu sections. You know, it's got two sides defending against the tactics and, of course, applying the tactics. Now, this section, this, uh, this list rounds off with saying the deepest sections of ninjutsu are Mumo no Ikan and understanding a person's heart which is amazing, it's really good, but we'll get into that later. So, the student now, so those, this is the Book of Samurai series, and that's book one, and that's book two. Now this, we've estimated, will be about 10 books. And one of the, not the final thing, because it depends on the order, but will be the Shonen Ki. So it's gonna be 10 books long. So imagine, it's, excuse me, it's there, right? You've got another eight books before it's finished, and that's the bit, that's the start of ninjutsu information. So what happens next is you get into Suisen Yoho, which is actually the um, the water tactics. Now here's where you've got to really start dividing what is ninjutsu and what is not, because there's ninjutsu, I said infiltration, and there's, oh sorry, my phone's there. Uh, now here's where you have to decide what is ninjutsu, because you've got infiltration and ninjutsu, You've then got defense, which shows you what ninjutsu is from the opposite side. So it's still ninjutsu. And then you've got things that are on the borderline and things that are definitely outside, but have one foot in it. So, for example, in the next book, which is nowhere near out yet, we're still right in the beginning of it. There's water tactics for night stealth raids and how to prepare your arrows, your bows, your strings and how to move through the water really low in your sort of samurai armor with strings. Everything waterproofed up and you can come out of the water and kill the enemy and then move off in the current and things like that. There's all that sort of stuff. Um, shinobi sort of at sea, shinobi in, you know, on boats and things like that. Um, then after that, we've got the ways of the Lord. And I'm not going to go through it all, but you get the idea that bit by bit, it builds up. And you can't look at it from just this at the end because that, you know, I'm not saying it's not useful, but it's a very, very, you know, it's not got all the stages that a real samurai student would go through. So what happens is, is our fictional, our or historical Natori student is going through these scrolls. And as we say, by the time we've translated everything, you guys will have it all. But bit by bit, they started to understand how Gunpo is slotted together and Ninjutsu or Shinobi no Jutsu, as it's correctly known, slots into it. So at the minute, that's floating alone, if you like. And just bit by bit, we're anchoring it down and then it's starting to find its place and you're starting to see that the place is getting found. Now, let me continue. After those 10 scrolls, there's another 10 scrolls, but much shorter, actually, much shorter, but divided into 10. Now, they predate Natori Sanjoro Masazumi. They're before him. And that means that it's passed down directly like the family's famous for medicine. So uh, they, they've got medical recipes and inside those scrolls are the recipes for all the medicine, things like that. And of course, there's actually a powder scroll, military powder scroll, which is one of the ones that's missing. And without doubt, we, I know what's in it. It's referenced what is actually in it. Things like um, poisons, uh, invisible inks, uh, food pills, hunger pills, explosives, fire, equip, all that. There'll be tons of shinobi stuff in it, but it is missing. Now, I think, just out of interest for you guys, I think it's missing because it was the most dangerous. The actual Shoninki itself has... Let me put this in context for you. So, each one of these manuals, roughly, let's go with this book because we're supporting this book today. Each one of these manuals has three copies of it and I've collected all three copies from around Japan. One of them has four, a couple of them have two, you know it sort of goes up but on the whole there are three copies of each manual. 
There are 12 copies in the world that I know of, of the Shonen Key. 12. That's how much that was written out, the secret one, and the not secret ones were absolutely not. However, the powders, the military powders, has zero copies. We can't find it anywhere in any of the collections. Those three major collections have each of the 10. All of them are missing the powders. So it might be that the powders is actually more secret than the Shoninki and the other stuff. So we don't know what's in that fully, but hopefully one day we will find a copy. Let's hope. So you've got these 10 family skulls. Now they have the basis of, it starts to get into the mental side. So it starts to introduce Mumo no Ikan and uh, to the getting carried away with like the art of flattery and the art of understanding a person's by their, you know, spirit and, and Buddhism and Shinto start to move into it. And it really starts to come together in a sort of crescendo of information. So after those 10 extra scrolls, so we've got the first 10, we've got the second 10, there's actually one more scroll, but it's, <laughs> to be honest, it's 12 volumes long. And um, I have got a copy. So I've got a copy and uh, I've got it all there and it is fully illustrated, fully annotated. It's got all the information, everything is explained. And it is like an encyclopedia or a, a glossary, if you like, of samurai things. So it touches on all subjects, even hunting and flower arrangement. In fact, we had one of the flower arrangements done from it in Japan. It was excellent and it looked beautiful. It was a pre-war battle flowers. How cool is that? So uh, basically, you've got a ton of new information on Shinobi in there that nobody knows about. I've got a copy, as I say, nobody's aware of it. And it probably is the same amount as all the stuff before it is in there again. So, for example, floating aids, um, again, explosives are in there as a part of it. And uh, some of the poisons, actually how the different equipment Shinobi used to communicate with each other in the forests, uh, the secret codes that they use. There's all sorts. And that doesn't include, if you look at the Bansen Shukai, the Book of Ninja, that actually talks about chi and um, esoteric sections. Now that is sometimes classed as ninjutsu, but it's not. And Natoru has all that as well, extra as well. So at this point, we've got the first 10 manuals, you've got the second 10 manuals, and then you've got this 12 set volume of stuff with more shinobi stuff in it. Even the Natoru specific strike torches for shinobi um, missions and things like that. And again, the balls that you carry with fire, all of that. So not only you're at like 30 independent volumes. As I say, it depends on the way you count because that last one is one. It's just got one title, but it's 12 volumes. It may be 13 volumes long, which uh, ends, you know, it basically is massive. It's bigger than the rest put together. Then you drop off that and their student has gone through everything now up to that point. He's pretty much got everything that a samurai needs to know. If he studied it well, he's also got his copy of The Art of War and things like that. He's a top quality samurai, fully under the Kishu domain, uh, probably stamped up by Natoru Ryu, everything. But there's more. There are definitely two ninja scrolls or shinobi scrolls in Natoru Ryu. Definitely two, possibly three. It depends, I'm still researching that. Uh, there is a third one, but um, it's dubious whether it is or isn't. And then there's the section of class in that first section in there. Is that the nat first Natoru Ninja Scroll? Because what's in there, which only something like 14 or 15 pages, is bigger than most scrolls. When I've traveled all over Japan and got the scrolls, most of them are smaller than that initial foundation platform. That's how impressive the system is, however. So there's the one that I have found and got. Now I've had it handwritten out. And this is the scroll, the not missing scroll, but the, the one that not many people know about in Natoru is this one. This is the Natoru Ryu um, pre Shoninki Ninja Scroll. So before you get to the Shoninki, you've got to go 10, 10, 12, bang. Now that is just the Mokoroku, which means list. It's not got the, the, the text in. I've got the text in a different place, but I'm not getting it out. Um, that is uh, sets up all your ninjutsu, expands on that first list I've shown you, and that is pretty much one of, it's a maximum, it's over 130 points or articles on ninjutsu there, right there. 
which is outstanding. And I tell you what, I've got it translated from Yoshi. It's not publishable yet. We're not at that stage. In fact, we've got to get through the rest of the book, but it is Excellent. I read it from time to time and think, <laughs> splendid. So you get all the way through that, guys, as a student, as a student of Nato Review, a historical one. Then, if you've got all that done, I say we don't know whether the gunpowder one was more secret. I'm not sure. That's a that's a theory. You get to that, you get the Shonen Gear, True Path of the Ninja. So you're like, okay. Now, with all that stepped up, the foundation, you've got to imagine it like that. Ten books stepped up. That goes on top. Boom. And you've got to imagine it like each sentence in here connects to there. Connects all the way down. That's why I say it all fits in like that. It doesn't flow around. It's got to fit in. And it's got to fit in inside your mind. One of the great things that is in that manual is it says you'll find that sh the shinobi arts spread out into every other art. It's not like it's one specific thing. You can't truly identify shinobi no jutsu uh, in, in this aspect. It rests and connects to everything. So in some of the family pre-Natori Masazumi scrolls, it clearly talks about Buddhism. It's got an understanding of the mind, of mental processes, of people, of the five desires and things like that. And that's absolutely um, connected to manipulating the enemy in their mind, in manipulating the enemy's uh, state of mind. Then again, you've got all the medical stuff about which organ deals with which emotion. And again, Shoninki talks about the organs and the emotions that are connected and how you deal with that. And then that bases on... so. People, a lot of people miss it, but they've got the emotions near the seven emotions. Each of those seven emotions connects to a liver. Oh, sorry, um, not a liver. Uh, an, an internal um, organ like the liver. And uh, each one of those has a connection to the five uh, Taoist five element theory. So you've got to go Taoist five element theory, medical understanding of internal organs, the emotions that are produced by those internal organs, according to tra traditional Chinese medicine, and then the manipulation of those emotions and the hiding of it in Mumon no Ikan, the gateless gate. So Mumon no Ikan is the, one of the highest forms of ninjutsu, and it's the idea of looking at the person's mind through their interface, through their body. But you've got to understand all this complex system of Chinese medicine all the way to the crescendo of that at the top. Another example which again we only started with that this put us on the start of that so we were in the same position as everyone else we just had the text but then we went and you know did, did basically did the research and uh what we came across and it's now in this book again back to this one it connects directly to that one i'll give you an example of the string that connects it all for, for pretty much every sentence it says in the show ninki you should use a cylinder tube called a donohi and it's got embers in it. Now, most people are aware of what the Dono he is. And it's, but if you're not, it's a tube that's got holes in it and it's got uh, embers in it and you're blowing it and you'll get fire from it and you can carry it and it keeps you warm and you snuggle it at night, you give it a kiss because you're freezing. And then when you need to set a fire as a ninja, it's not even a ninja tool to be honest. Everybody says it's a ninja tool, but it's not. It's totally a standard tool pretty much in the rest of Natoru. But in here it is used for ninjutsu. And you take the cap off, blow it, you get some flames. Now it says in the Shoninki simply use the Donohi or use you know the fire starting tools for Jiaki. And this means ground burning. And we were like, Jiaki? Hmm. And you know, is it for warming the ground when you sleep? One of our first theories was that we were just unsure. And then obviously we ditched that theory quite early on, quite a long, quite a long time, and we just had to put the, the translation as Jiaki ground burning. And um we found it. It's here. The proper explanation of Jiaki. Bizarrely has three explanations. So Jiaki comes in self-burning, ground burning, and one of them is divided into two sets of it. So the idea is, is that this one tool that is an ember carrying tool is used by Shinobi when they go out and they need to retreat. You can burn the ground and burn the, and smoke out the enemy so they can't get to you. It's a case of when you want to set fires and pretend that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're 
fortress, like self burn is going to go down, but it's, it's a ruse, which is um, another form of a fire sort of system, the Kajutsu inside of Natoryu, that's quite complex. And then there's obviously burning bridges, burning all burning boats, and all this sort of stuff, and uh, scorched earth policy. So if you are going to go into a land, you can burn everything. All this comes from this one sentence of, use this tool for Jiaki. And it's all explained in that book. So what I'm trying to get across to you guys is that the Natoryu ninjutsu, people, the shinobi ninjutsu, everybody thinks, oh, that's it. You no. Know, these are not ninja books. They're not ninja books. They're, 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 this is what I've been trying to say for about 10 years. Now, actually, it's dead on 10 years, by the way, guys. I started my YouTube channel in 2008, and uh, I started doing my ninja videos in 2009. And um, now we are at 2019. So this is actually 10 years now I've been saying this message to eggs and tomatoes being thrown at me. I'm like, psh, 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 get out of my way. And um, what we've got here, finally, is it's starting to come together that ninjutsu is not its own entity that just hangs about. You start with a, a, the land. The next is you've got a family who own that land, a clan. And that clan have a name. And that name, in this case, is Natori. And that's their name. And they serve a higher lord. If you're not at the top of the pecking order in Samurai Times, you've got to be as close to the top as you can get. And Natoriu, I have to tell you guys, have been close to the top for over 500 years. They were not the upper echelon. As I say, you've got the top guys like the um, Yamamoto uh, family. You've got the Takeda family. You've got the Oda family. The Natori are nowhere near at that stage. However, they are that rung below it that support them. So when Takeda Shingen was going and doing his battles and uh, the Natori clan were there and actually the Natori clan were giving the Takeda army their medicine and talking about tactics. And they used to study castle construction and build castles as well. It was part of the Natori legacy. After the Takeda fell, uh, the Natori then went to the Tokugawa clan and they then from there split up and some went to Kishu and they served Basically, Tokugawa Iyasu's son. Now, we all know that Tokugawa Iyasu's son, Tokugawa Yorinobu, was pretty much that line, that one line of three extra lines that created the shoguns later on. So the Natori have always been a very high middle class family, if you know what I mean. They're very good. So you've got this land, you've got the family, you've got a name, and then you've got an art. And what's your art? And their art is Natori Ryu, sometimes known as Kusunoki Ryu. Uh, that's a different story entirely, but it's the same thing. It's the same art with three names, actually. So um, what you've got here is this family going around and building on their art, making it better, producing more stuff, and and becoming, a, a, what's the word, perfecting, Gumpo, the way of the military. But what happens then is the Natori family divide off. Uh, they, they don't leave. Well, this is metaphorical, if you like. Basically, it goes to a different family there. At first, it goes to Unobe, the Unobe family. But the Unobe family changed their name to Natori out of respect for the, the, the school. They actually, the school is so prestigious that a samurai family change their name to match the name of Natori to connect themselves so he when he's this he's the grand master Unobe sensei is the grand master changes to Natori sensei so it's not Natori sensei Natori sensei Natori sensei well it's actually Isui sensei but Natori Natori Isui sensei is Natori and then Uno, uh, Natori Hyozaemon and then Unobe comes a bit further on and he's like change his name he's like I'm Natori yeah because that line goes but eventually it does go out to another family and the Natori family and that family, obviously, together. But it's carried on by other people. And this is the point where it gets opened up to pretty much the Kishu people. And anyone from Kishu who's got the correct qualifications, we don't actually know what those were or whether they were accepted, would then go along to what is now pretty much the Prefectural Museum, I think, in um, Wakayama, if you go there. And if you hang about on the steps, that, we've checked the maps... That is where the old Natoru Dojo was. So roughly me and Yoshi, my translator, went there, hung about on the steps. And they were like, here is where those families studied this material. Real samurai studying real material with one of the most, if not the biggest, ninja cur curriculums. Now, that's a bold, bold statement, Cummings. Actually, so the biggest ninja curriculum, hold on. The biggest ninja curriculum is the Book of Ninja. So I'll give you a comparison. 
That is the complete system of um, the Fujibayashi family for ninjutsu. That is one of 10 books for Natori. So Natori Ryu is 10 times the volume in size of the Bansen Shukai, but that's only ninjutsu, okay? So if you take Natori Ryu, say 10% of their study is ninjutsu, it defeats the Bansen Shukai. However, we haven't done that maths. But the point I'm trying to make is the Bansen Shukai is not all ninjutsu at all. In fact, I would say about 40 to 50% of the Bansen Shukai is ninjutsu because you got this idea of lots of Chinese classics are in there, which is fine. Everybody bangs Chinese classics. Everybody loves a bit of a Chinese classic. You've then got the extra bit at the end, which is written after the Bansen Shukai. So you take 80 pages off or whatever, 50 pages, you take that off. The introduction is literally him saying, it's a great introduction, but it's him saying, this is how you should be correct. You've got like three chapters. Then you've got this big chunk in the middle around chapter 16, 17, 18, where it's about um, chi and uh, weather and rain. That is not ninjutsu. It, take it out. He's put it in there because it's in his school. And that is not ninjutsu. But in Natoru, we've got the same stuff. I can tell you now, we know exactly which Chinese manual it's all taken from. And they're pretty much all the same in most schools. They just take this one Chinese manual and they have a go at it. So anyway, my point being is, when you strip the Bansen Shukai down to its pure ninjutsu, and don't let me get you wrong, the Book of Ninja has got, it's pretty much the best book on ninjas, to be fair. It's the best. Because it's direct, talks about burglary, talks about, you know, getting in, getting out, blah, blah, blah. But if you actually strip that down and then find out the volume, which we've not done, and then you actually strip Natoru down when we finished it and take all the ninja curriculum and put it next to the Bansen Shukai, I bet you they're either equal or Natoru is bigger. But we won't be able to know that until I can totally strip down both of them and that won't happen until it's all translated. So what I'm trying to say is for those people who are like, oh, Natoru is ninjutsu, no. No is the answer to that. It's massive, massive. And one day, hopefully, be able to put it all together and create a separate book, which would be nice, wouldn't it? Is the Ninjutsu of Natori Ryu, which would be wonderful, but it would take a long time to do. And it's, we're talking a couple of decades. So we're not there yet. So I hope I'm making my point, guys, is, and the point I am trying to make, is uh, you can't have Ninjutsu on its own. Even the Bansen Shukai, which is predominantly Ninjutsu, as I said, you know, it's about 50% if you strip it all down. Um, and its focus is ninjutsu. Even that has to rest on the other stuff. And the other stuff may, is probably missing. That's why it's a lot smaller. And then, of course, you've got to have your swords and shit. You've got to have your... hand time combat's not so important in the samurai world. It's genuinely not. And that's not my opinion. I've got quotes upon quotes of how hand time combat... In fact, one of the best quotes that's already out there is that hand time combat is useless, but it keeps you fit and it helps you run away. No joke, it helps you it helps you retreat at the right time because you keep fit and limber and stretch and all that. But beyond that, it's a waste of time, don't bother with it. Because um, you've got a big, hefty sword to murder people with, or a gun, or some bombs, or a lot of fire. So you're like, you know what I mean? You've got like these bombs, fire, guns, arrows, swords, spears, horses, caltrops, chains, dogs. Oh yeah, and a, and a hand lock. <laughs> you know I mean, people are, the samurai were like, it's only later that became popular. Anyway, that's, I'm diverging, 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 I'm not sure. So anyway, my point being, guys, is that there's a real place in the Takeda clan which had gumpo and medicine. Later, we've got this real samurai who's perfecting everything and he starts bringing out the ninjutsu and bringing his family teachings and polishing the ninjutsu and there's one quote I've got from Natori, which makes me die to this day. And it says, there are, I have recorded or there are lots of things in other ninja families that are dubious and strange and like magical and crazy. So I've decided not to record them here. I don't know whether he means I'm not recording them or whether he means I haven't written them down here. I've written them down somewhere else. It's ambiguous. I hope one day to find a scroll by his sui sensei that says this is the stuff it's just wacky crazy shit there you go <laughs> okay and we'll add it on to the 10 books we'll add it on but again we don't know so to round up guys i'm gonna start rounding this up because we'll get to around a 30 minute video a bit a bit over uh, i'm not in a rush today uh, basically um you have to start with you and you have to start 
with a group or a singular, whatever you want to do. But the point is there's a human. And then you have to study. You've got to study the way of war. This includes, as I say, hand-to-hand -hand combat's there, but it's lesser. It's still there, though. But then you've got swords and you've got spears and you've got bows and arrows and you've got, like, as I say, explosives, chemistry. Then you've got to really start looking at the gun pole. So all that stuff I've just talked about, the spears, the fighting, is not in here in the slightest. This is just all the stuff that you've got to learn on top of that. So what you've got is real people, real samurai, studying under a real master with who wrote it all down, who then wrote their kudan, kudan down, the oral tradition later, into three or four sections. I then come along and collect it all and then put it together. And we're, as I say, here we go. We're starting, we're getting the, uh, there you go. You're getting the, the section done by the end. 10 it'll be a long process guys we're in no rush because it's a lot of work it is each one of those is a hundred thousand words each 500 550 pages of information there's going to be 10 of them which if you actually do the math guys it's about it's uh about i think it works out half a million words or something daft <laughs> possibly a million depends because we don't know where it ends because if there's 100,000 words in each and we get 10 books, that's a million words. But we don't know how short it will get or where it'll stop. So let's call it somewhere between half a million and a million words on samurai arts and warfare translated and available from Amazon, from anywhere. You know, bookshops, it's proper published. The publisher's real in London and all that. So it's all done. So, guys, where am I going with all this? So... Obviously, this video I'm making is an advert for this book because this is our newest book out and YouTube is my platform for selling the books and that's my business. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you realise that you can't just throw about the show and ink here. While you should always read the show and ink, you can't just have that and go like, oh yeah, I know Natori Ninjutsu. You have to know, it's this simple, guys. You have to know Natoru to know Natoru Ninjutsu. You can't just learn Natoru Ninjutsu and not know Natoru. It just wouldn't work. It's integrated so much that you can guess at it, but the layers that go before the Ninjutsu scroll, even you would, if you don't have that, you're well behind. So my point being, guys, is keep up to date with the Book of Samurai series. Get yourself a copy of True Path of Ninja. Read it. Why not? You know, it's all there. You can understand the basics, the, you know, the first level of it. Uh, the good thing about the show Ninki is you can read it and read it and read it. I must have read it 50 times. And you're like, I didn't notice that before. You know, I, I, we even went through the translation of it. And still to this day, you're like, oh, yeah, and that means that. And, and then the more you read these, you're like, oh, that means that. So you never get bored of reading this book. It's my most read book in the world. Um, right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. There'll be a link down below for uh, that book. So please do get yourself a copy. Again, that's book two. So get yourself book one, book two and True Path of the Ninja. I hope you enjoyed that. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, historical ninjutsu is a real, it's an art. When, how can I say this? So in here, he says, in the Shonen he says, ninjutsu is an art for bushy warriors. And at first, when you read it, like, because he's saying, you know, that's, you know, it the, should be done by proper warriors. Blah, blah. But then you realise you need <laughs> full-time job of only studying gumpo, which Bushy do, to understand this stuff. If you're a farmer or a factory worker or whatever you are now or back then, you don't have enough time. <laughs> You've got to study Natoru to understand Natoru Ninjutsu and you need a full-time job and you need the education of a middle-ranking sort of like uh, you know, semi-aristocrat or whatever. You know, I'm not actually... Basically, samurai sit in that rank between aristocrats and commoners. That's where they sit. The top half of samurai are aristocrats or secondary aristocrats. The bottom half are peasants. Oh, and there's this sort of middle... The Natoru are about here where they're sort of like not blue-blooded, but they're educated and they hang about with, you know semi-aristocrats if you like and um, that's another debate on um, Japanese history uh, but anyway that's where you need to be for full time to understand all of it it's that difficult so um, and I do this full time I write and do everything all day only on gumpo and I struggle to fully understand the scope of it so and again you know 
it just takes many years. So what I'm trying to say is I do it all day, every day, even my spare time I do it. You know, I have a couple of other hobbies behind it, but 95% of my time is taken up with my books and with Natural Review. And we have a great bunch of guys and girls who are supporting, you know, historical gumpo. So if you're interested in ninjutsu, right guys, if you're interested in ninjutsu, remember the first thing you need to do is realize it's only a cog in a bigger machine and the bigger machine is called gumpo. And if you want the only gumpo school out there, there is, in fact, all of the Koryu schools now to this day are missing most of their gumpo, pretty much. Uh, I've looked at some of the schools, M nearly all the schools are missing most of it. And you've got like, they've got some swordsmanship left or they've got a few tricks left. The best one out there is Katori Shintori, which is an amazing school. But even that has lost tons of stuff. And if you put Natori Ryu next to any of them, Katori, Ryu, Katori Shintori Ryu included. Now, I don't have anything bad to say about the school. In fact, I saw um, Otaki Sensei and he was one of the best men I've ever met. He genuinely was the nicest man. And Katori Shintoryu, I have a deep respect for. I think it's wonderful. But over the years, the, lots has been lost. And if you put it all together, Natoriyu outdoes everything out there on the market, without a doubt. And we're 20% we're, we're in. That, you know what I mean? So I hope you enjoyed that. Right, guys, enjoy. I'm going to cut it there. I'm going to edit this. And uh, I look forward to your comments. And I hope you enjoy the book.